it's the time of the season, ladies and gents. Tis the season for silly season. Um, if that sounded stupid, apologies from my end. But for the second time this week, welcome to Transfer Talk. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing, we're going to be debating the potential that one of the Haas drivers, more focused on Roman Grosjean, could be being replaced at the summer break. There were rumours that maybe he could be replaced before the German Grand Prix, but already I'm, I'm going to shut those down. I think it would be extremely silly to replace him before the summer break. However, after the summer break, yeah, in that giant one month gap we have for Formula One through August, definitely a change could be on the cards at Haas F1. And that's what we're going to be talking about. How has it got to this point? Is it suitable for the team? Is it wise for them to make a change? And potentially, who could come in to replace Roman Grosjean or Kevin Magnussen? Because we're not going to discount K-Mag, because to be honest with you, I don't think either of them have had a good season whatsoever. The team currently sits in ninth place in the Constructors. 16 points, the only team behind them is Williams. And Williams... I'm sure you're all aware, have a big fat zero point. So the team that was so hoping last season and got so, so close to fourth place in the Constructors, this seems like a complete way off from the highs they were at last season. Now, things haven't been completely plain sailing with the team ever since pre-season started. They signed a deal with Rich Energy, a new title sponsor. And while owner Gene Haas isn't short of a penny or two, he is a billionaire after all, they brought Rich Energy into the team. And I think already, with that partnership winding down as early as, well, in the next race, it seems like that could be all a bit of drama that the team didn't need at this point in the season, considering that car is... A very strange one, and I know that's a vague statement to say, but I think the team would agree in that they don't really know what's wrong with the car. They seem to have issues getting the tyres up to temperature, but they don't know why that happens. They're very, very quick in qualifying, but when it comes to the race, well, that pace just goes completely out of the window. Problems were already there in winter testing. The signs were there that the car could be quick. However, the signs were also there that there were fundamental issues with the car. And so now comes the question, is it the car's fault that they're ninth in the constructors or is it the drivers? More importantly, is it the drivers making either rookie mistakes, being too risky? But more importantly, is it the drivers just not doing a good enough job on the Sunday and not picking up points? So on your screen now, you should be seeing the first of two head-to-head -head statistic tables from the two teammates at Haas at the moment, Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen. Grosjean has been with the team ever since the team started, all the way back in 2016. Took a bit of a risk, actually, at the time. Was guaranteed a seat at Renault, which a manufacturer seat in Formula 1 should definitely not be frowned upon, even for Renault at the time. Kevin Magnussen didn't join to 2017, but he also made the same switch, left Renault. He actually did race for a Renault for one season and then joined Haas because Renault didn't want to keep him because they wanted Jolien Palmer instead. Yes, that aged well, that decision, didn't it? But I just want to go through some statistics with you now because I think quite a few journalists out there from different sources, different media platforms aren't, in my opinion, Analysing the situation in and well enough detail. I'm hearing many comments that Grosjean isn't doing a good enough job. He's being destroyed by Kevin Magnussen this season. But I think actually, when you take a second, you step back and you look at the statistics for this season in more detail, that isn't quite the full picture. Last season, fair play. Grosjean was not good enough last season. And I do not know how he kept his seat, to be honest with you. Magnussen was super, super consistent last season, just missed out on that best of the rest title. However, so far this season, in the bare bones statistics, he's doing a better job. Out qualified Grosjean on comparable qualifiers 5 to 3. That's not counting when Grosjean was blocked in Monaco. That's also not counting when Magnussen crashed in Canada. 
Grosjean's best qualifying result was in the very first race of the season in Australia. Got a P6 for the team and on that day Magnussen got P7. K-Mag's best result was a couple of races ago now in Austria. Qualified P5. Five place grid penalty. Ended up finishing behind the Williams cars. But still a cracking lap at the time. The race battle however. Grosjean. On comparable races where neither car has DNF'd, Grosjean has outraced Magnussen 4-1, to one, but it's those point finishes that makes it a little bit different. 2-2, two to two, but Magnussen sits on 14 points, Grosjean just the 2. But the statistics that I think are a little bit more interesting are these ones. Grosjean's got 2 point finishes, so does Magnussen. But Grosjean, when he finishes a race, or when both cars actually finish a race is the more likely to pick up points. He's got two in five races, Magnussen two in nine. Grosjean has had five retirements this season out of ten races. That is not a great statistic at all. Magnussen's just DNF'd the once, but Grosjean has had three mechanical DNFs. Magnussen zero. One of Grosjean's DNFs was in that very first race of the season where his tyres fell off, was running in a net P6. That was going to be a huge points haul for him and the team. Tyres fell off, zero points for him on that day. Also have mechanical DNFs in Azerbaijan and France. As mentioned, Grosjean's got two non-mechanical DNFs. Magnussen won. One of them was last time out in Silverstone where both hit each other on lap one. I've got to tell you, I was there at that race. I was in the Beckett's grandstand and I could see the actual crash between the two of them. The contact was so, so minimal but Formula 1 cars this season in particular, the slightest bit of damage can just destroy everything. And that's exactly what happened with those two drivers. Grosjean's other non-mechanical DNF was also a first lap incident where Lance Stroll ran into the back of him, ruined Grosjean's floor and consequently had to DNF. The average qualifying position, Magnussen does lead that one. His is 9.8, Grosjean's is 11.8, but that doesn't take into account... Other factors, aka Magnussen's crash in Canada, which caused Grosjean actually on that particular day to not get through to Q3, but Magnussen did. Also, that doesn't include when Gasly blocked Grosjean. The average race finishing position, similar sort of story. K Mag is ahead on 13.9, but Grosjean a little bit behind on 14.4. But I think for both the average quality and the average race, they're not too dissimilar and very quickly one poor race result next time out could swing that around. Likewise, a brilliant points finishing position could swing that the other way. So I just wanted to put those statistics in there because, again, I hear a lot of people, especially in the written media, completely discounting Kevin Magnussen to be losing a seat at the end of next season. But personally, I feel both of them are not doing a good enough job. And Kevin Magnussen's points finishes, again, one of them coming in Melbourne where Grosjean's tyres literally fell off and was on for points. The other one coming in Spain where Grosjean up to the la well the entire Grand Prix, the whole way should be kenned, was P7, was best of the rest. But after the safety car, the tyres, Grosjean didn't switch them on. Magnussen got past, bit of contact and Grosjean fell through the order. But even so, Magnussen on that particular day proving he still got it. He's got time. He is, arguably, well, I don't even think arguably, I think he has proved last season the better driver of the two on his day. Grosjean now, he's been in Formula 1, well, made his debut in 2009, but it's been in Formula 1 for full time since 2012. Magnussen came in in 2014, sat out 2015, has been in Formula 1 ever since 2016. Both of them have let's say, bad boy reputations. That might be a little bit um, on the nose, but what I mean by that, Grosjean in particular, known as the Formula One crash master, and whilst many people say he doesn't deserve this seat, I think what he proved, especially in those first two seasons with Haas F1, what he proved with Lotus is that this guy can be quick. Podium in Spa 2015, one race, okay, shouldn't determine a driver, but I think especially up to last season, before last season, he had proved himself in Formula 1 and deserved a chance. Last season really 
hurt his record. Far too many mistakes, didn't get points till Austria, and it seems as if he hasn't quite been able to refine that mojo this season. At the end of 2018, yeah, eventually he found his form, but he can't do that every single season. And I think that's what's happening now. Sits on just two points, two points finishes overall. That does not look great. And that isn't great considering where the car was in the early stages of the season. Likewise, Magnussen, 14 points at the moment, looks okay because in the championship, he's not that far behind. However, again, two points finishes after 10 races is not what the team want. Now the frenzy comes in. Now there's a period where potentially they could try and change things up in the summer break to make a dramatic impact before the end of the season to save their season. So, first of all, who should they replace? I think Grosjean, to be honest with you. Again, I think it's really, really close. And Magnussen once again has proved this season that his wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing is a little bit harsh and a little bit dangerous and on the edge. And I do not like that, I do have to say. Too much for me sometimes, Kevin Magnussen. However, if Grosjean got a chance after last season, Magnussen, for me, deserves a chance after this season. So let's say, for this video, Grosjean should be fired. And I would like to clarify, and I don't think I've done that just yet, I think the team should keep both drivers to the end of the season. I then also think they should make at least one switch because it's not working. Last season, they could have been fourth if it wasn't for Grosjean's mistakes. Likewise, if the team was more reliable, they would have been fourth. But two seasons in a row, if you're not performing, you shouldn't be there. And most other teams would say one season if you're not performing, you shouldn't be there. So Grosjean, if he doesn't turn things around soon, he should be out the door. Magnussen, I think the team, considering they've given Grosjean a chance, they should give Kevin a chance. That being said, let's say one of these guys does get fired. Let's say in the summer break, who do they bring in? Next season, it's a little bit easier because Formula 2 would have been wrapped up. We can see where other drivers are being placed on the grid. But this season, it's very, very difficult because there's not, in my particular opinion, that many options for the team considering what they have now and what they're going to be looking for. Because if you're looking for a, let's call it an impact substitute for the rest of the year, what you want is a bit of Formula 1 experience. You want them to be quick, but I think what Haas desperately need, because both Grosjean and Magnussen are quick on their day and have experience, but what the team need is consistency. That's exactly what they are lacking at the moment. And again, both drivers this season, arguably, well, not even arguably, the car itself has not been consistent. And for me, that's the biggest issue. So, what driver would come into a team where they're asked to be consistent, but the car is the ninth best? And I fully believe that the team don't think their car is the ninth best. Because on average pace so far this season, they're the fifth best in qualifying terms. But it's their race pace is not good enough. So it's a real dilemma for someone coming in. Anyway, the most likely candidates at the moment, the big, big rumours are Esteban Ocon. Mercedes are potentially toying with the idea of letting him go from the Mercedes family to give him a chance in Formula 1. And I think, to be honest, he is the most likely candidate by a country mile. By a country mile. He's not in Formula 1. Any car is better than no car. So that just makes sense. The only way that could happen, though, is if Mercedes let him go. Because Ferrari, technically, technically, Haas is Ferrari's junior team. Technically. But it's a very loose tie these days with Haas buying a lot of parts from Ferrari. But if Ocon was a Mercedes young driver, I don't think there's any chance that they'd let him go to Haas F1. You look at other drivers that currently don't have a Formula 1 seat. Fernando Alonso. I didn't mention him with the Ferrari rumours we were talking about the other day. But I don't think there's a chance in hell he would go back to a car. Especially a Haas car. That's ninth overall. There's no way that's going to happen. Pascal Verline, The F1 word bought that up the other day. Potentially. I like that move. Verline is linked with the Ferrari team. He's a Ferrari development driver currently has time off. The Formula E season has just ended. 
I think would fit into that team quite well. So Verline, I think, a little bit like Ocon, it's between those two at the moment. Would the team take a Sergio Perez? I think they'd love to have Sergio Perez, who has proved in Formula 1 he is consistent. Has proved he can get the best out of a bad car. For me, though, I don't think Sergio would go to Haas. I don't think he needs that upset. He's got a good thing at the moment at Racing Point, where he's the team leader. The car at the moment isn't particularly great, but is Haas at the moment a backward step? I, th I think so. Other candidates, to be honest with you, I don't think exist. A lot of people will look at Formula 2, and I think, yeah, next season, that's probably sensible. Taking someone young, like a Nick De Vries, like a Luca Giotto, someone who has proved themselves in Formula 2, someone who is young enough to make an impact. They can give a chance and see what they can do. But at the moment, that's not what they're looking for. They're not trying to take any risks. So... I think the most likely is Esteban Ocon. But I would love to see Pascal Verlein in Formula 1. And I think, after a difficult year in Formula E, he could do quite a good job. So it's between those two for me. But to be honest, I don't think Haas is going to be firing either driver halfway through the Formula 1 season. But I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. This is a highly, highly... Well... Well, I was going to say highly debatable one, but I think it's more just a giant jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? Like Silly Season always is, to be honest with you. But it's a fun one, for sure. I've not even mentioned guys like Stoffel Van Dorn. I've not mentioned guys like Alex Alban. There's so, so many possible outcomes for this. But I want to know your thoughts. Is someone going to be fired in the summer break? Will we see Grosjean by 2020? I think it's unlikely. But again, I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.